Stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. Welcome to the stream, everyone. We are, it is Friday, end of the week. We are uh, streaming today. We are going to, I had a tough time deciding what to play today uh, because uh, I'm not quite ready to kick off the uh, Circle Undone campaign, so I was. Uh, Racking my brain as to what to play, and I settled on uh, Stella Clark, the new Survivor Investigator who will be coming out in the Investigator Starter Decks. Uh, later this, uh, I believe it is now scheduled to come out in August, so we have to wait a few more months before we get our hands on that product, but uh, we can, uh, we're can. we going to give Stella a run today. Now, uh, we, do, we know what uh, Stella's uh, signature skill is. Uh, neither rain nor snow, but we do not know what her signature weakness is uh, called by the mists. So we'll just play a couple of extra. We'll just play an extra regular weakness to uh, make up for that. So it's not going to be a uh, a perfect representation of what her deck can do, but uh, it will uh, just give us an idea as to uh, how she uh, how she plays and uh, what. Uh, and uh, what she can do. Hi Bernard, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it today. Before we get started, I just want to uh, thank the uh, patrons of the channel for their tremendous support. These uh, people are uh, amazing and have gone above and beyond to uh, to support the channel over the uh, over the years. And uh, I am uh, grateful for their support. And uh, if you see, I know that some of them on this list are content creators in their own right. Tim Fiskus and Juicy Pekka Kupalainen uh, also uh, create Arkham Horror content. So I would uh, highly recommend that you go out and uh, support their work as well uh, if you get the chance. I think we're set up uh, and ready to go uh, in Octagon. If I can uh, get this uh, working properly. See how this goes. There we go. Perfect. So we have uh, today. Uh, hi Benjamin, welcome to the stream. Today we're playing Stella Clark. Uh, we don't know what her signature weakness is, but we do know what her signature skill is. Hi Kenyon, welcome to the stream. So we are going to play. We're going to take it easy today. We're going to play uh, Return to the Gathering and possibly uh, Return to the Midnight Masks as well, just to see how things go. Uh, Stella is a, uh, she's an interesting investigator, the uh, first transgender investigator in the game, which is uh, fantastic. We've got, uh, she's got three willpower, two intellect, three combat, and four uh, agility. Uh, so, uh, yes, those are the, uh, the Corsairs in the uh, search for Kadath are indeed men from Lang, although they are not labeled as such, which is uh, somewhat disappointing. Uh, they, are, they are pictured on numerous cards, but there is no man from Lang card, which is, uh, well, that's disappointing, but uh, we can have everything. Uh, I am hoping to put together a uh, man from Lang investigator at some point that uh, I can give away to people so they can... Uh, they can uh, play one. I have uh, not played Stella before. Uh, obviously, her uh, agility is her best stat, so uh, evading is uh, is good for her. She has the chosen and civic traits, and uh, the response after you fail a skill test, you may take an additional action during your turn this round. So, uh, whenever she fails a skill test, she gets a little bit of action advantage out of it, gets an extra action. Uh, she has uh, her Elder Sign effect is plus one, and you may instead choose to automatically fail this skill test to, uh, to heal one damage and one horror. She has eight health and eight uh, sanity, which I believe is the could be the highest in the game. I don't think I know of another one who has eight and eight. So she's got plenty of uh, plenty of health and sanity. Probably because she is expected to fail uh, a fair number of skill tests. Her stat line is not uh, fantastic. Uh, pretty average. Below a she's got below average intellect, which is always an issue uh, when you're uh, when you're uh, playing in solo. And uh, that four evade is is okay, 
but uh, sometimes if you need to kill things, we're going to need to to boost her combat up. Now the deck I'm playing, sort of a mix of uh, sort of a mix of uh, of some of the cards that are appearing in her uh, Investigator starter deck, as well as just some traditional Survivor good stuff. We've got the uh, the level zero version of the 18 Derringer, which has a two ammo, gives her plus two combat skill and deals an additional damage. And if she fails, she gets to place an ammo on the Derringer. We've got uh, scrounging for supplies, so we can pull it back to our hand. We're going with Peter Sylvester, uh, level zero, just because he gives us the plus one uh, agility. We also have a pair of track shoes to uh, further boost our agility. We have uh, Grimm's Fairy Tales, which is uh, one of the new cards in her Investigator starter deck that uses four secrets, and after an Investigator at your location fails a test, skill test by two or more, we can exhaust the Fairy Tales to spend one secret. Heal one horror from that Investigator. The uh, I believe her starter deck will include two copies of that. I'm only playing one. It seems uh, doesn't seem like a card that I want uh, multiples of at the moment. We've also got the old key ring, which is uh, similar to flashlight. It uh, uses two two keys, and if there are no keys on the old key ring, you discard it, and it has the action investigate. Your location gets minus two shroud for this location, and if you succeed, you remove one key from the old key ring. So unlike uh, flashlight, where you have to uh, you spend the supply before you investigate, the old key ring is only uh, spent after. Hi Tribulations, welcome to the stream, glad you could make it today. We've also got uh, other good uh, survivor cards. Uh, we've got uh, Resourceful, Live and Learn, Lucky. Now, neither Rain nor Snow has, uh, there are three copies in, uh, in Stella's deck. It has three wild icons, and uh, if this skill test fails, cancel all effects of the failed skill test. So, uh, that is uh, pretty good. Oh, there is a specific note from the men of on the uh, of the men from Ling linked to Corsairs on the agenda card. Yeah, awesome. Hi, David. Mel welcome to the stream. Uh, what else? We've got Take Heart, of course. That's uh, pretty much an auto include in Stella because it is uh, it has everything to do with failing. I've got uh, a couple copies of Last Chance. I threw a copy of Survival Instinct in there just because she is uh, she's evasion is her uh, is one of her better uh, abilities. We've also got Grit Your Teeth, which is uh, one of the new events in her uh, starter deck. Fast play after you fail a skill test, you get plus one for each of your skills for the remainder of the round. So if we uh, if we fail that, then we uh, Fail a skill test, play Grit Your Teeth, and then we we get slightly better for the rest of the round. Uh, we've got Trial by Fire, which will set our base uh, skill value, uh, one of our skills, to a 5. And, of course, look what I found to help us discover clues and Rabbit's Foot if we uh, fail skill tests. So we'll see how this deck goes, and uh, we shall... Uh, See uh, what uh, so I'm. Uh, I haven't played her, so uh, this should be interesting. Let's add a couple weaknesses to the deck since we don't have. Uh, we don't know yet what her uh, her signature weakness is going to be. So we've got oh the tower. That's a uh, the uh, the tower is nasty uh, for sure. One of the nastier weaknesses out there. So that's a uh, that's going to be. Uh, and we get through the gates, draw the top card of your deck. If it's not a weakness, remove that card from the game. Then search your deck, discard pile hand, and all players for each other copy of that card you own and remove them from the game as well. Uh, yeah, Bernard, Stella, all of the uh, investigators in the starter decks are pure survivors, uh, 0 to 5, and neutrals, uh, 0 to 5. So no, uh, no special... Uh, no uh, additional options for them. So uh, that uh, that creates some issues. I know I've been playing uh, Winifred Hebemach, and uh, 
there are uh, some uh, definitely some uh, issues uh, that I hope her uh, starter deck addresses since we don't know all of the the cards in it uh, especially playing through the circle undone with her uh, Winifred's one uh, one willpower is a huge liability in that particular campaign and uh, It'd be nice if there was some way rogues had uh, to get rid of cards in their threat areas like uh, like um, Frozen and Fear, but all the other ones as well in uh, that are in the uh, Circle Undone campaign. Having some sort of ability to get rid of those would be uh, very helpful indeed. Uh, I have been trying to get her through the secret name and have not had very much success, but I think that has more to do with I, the game I played last night. I drew... The game lasted nine turns, and I drew four auto fails, and uh, multiple. I think at least four, four elder things, which are minus threes. So, and of course, I drew an auto fail for the second game in a row. I drew an auto fail while trying to investigate at the landlord's quarters, which of course brings out a rat. And then, since I had realm of torment in my threat area, I got another rat. And uh, I think you can see where uh, where that. Uh, that game went uh, rather quickly. I think we're ready to uh, to start here, so let's draw our opening hand and uh, see how we do. We have a survival instinct, a grit your teeth, a resourceful, a last chance, and a live and learn. Not crazy about this hand at all, so we are going to uh, mulligan all five. We get a live and learn, a look what I found, Peter Sylvester, a fire axe, and a through the gates. And we get a scrounge for supplies. Okay. So let's, uh, we're probably going to want to get Peter down right away. So that will be our uh, our first action of the game will be to get Peter Sylvester down and bump our uh, bump our evade up to five or our agility sorry up to five. All right, uh, we don't have any way of investigating besides just uh, vanilla investigate actions right now. So our second action, we will go three versus three. Chaos bag says minus two. So that is a failure. So after we fail a skill test, you may take an additional action. So we get that action back. So we still have two actions. I'm going to play the live and learn. Uh, to give us a plus two bonus, and we will uh, take the test again. So now we're going 5v3. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one. So we failed the action, but Stella gives us an action back, and then we grab the, uh, we grab the clue with a live and learn. So uh, we have one action remaining. Um... I think I'm going to put down the fire axe. And uh, that will be our turn. All right, first, uh, first turn is in the books. We grab track shoes. OK, that's going to be nice. Another boost to our agility. We add our first Doom of the game, and we draw our first encounter card, which is going to be a Swarm of Rats. Man, how I loathe the Swarm of Rats in uh, in a secret name. Jeez. It's like, it's surprise. you know, you add a couple health to them, and then you add a couple of uh, fight to them, and they just become a real pain in the, uh, in the ass to, to take down, especially when you're dealing with two or three of them. All right, well, let's kill the rats. We will uh, attack with the... Uh, we can attack with the fire axe. Um, actually, the fire axe doesn't really do us any good. We're just going three versus one. 
against the rats. So let's do that. Chaos bag says a skull. I believe that is a minus one. Or no, that's a zero. No ghouls at our location. So we easily deal with the rats. Uh, let's move to the guest hall. The guest hall is a uh, zero shroud, uh, one shroud location with zero clues. We can't take draw actions here. Um, let's go up to the bedroom. The bedroom is a two shroud location one, one with one clue and after you fail a skill test while investigating the bedroom you discard one card at random from your hand. So we do have the option of look what I found, but uh, we're not going to get full value from it, which is not uh, ideal. Hmm, do I investigate or do I take a resource? I want to take a resource to get the track shoes down next turn. And then we can investigate. I don't mind losing the scrunch for supplies. And We get our s one of our signature skills, neither rain nor snow, three uh, wild icons. So that will help us. Quite a bit. Turn three. Encounter card is going to be the Zealot's Seal. Each investigator with three or fewer cards in hand must take one damage and one horror. Each investigator with four or more cards in hand tests two willpower. Each investigator who fails must discard two cards at random from his or her hand. So we are going uh, 3v2. Or we're discarding two at random. Hmm. I feel like we need to commit to the not the neither rain nor snow to that to go six v two. Chaos bag says elder sign. Okay, so we can plus one or we can choose to auto fail to heal a damage and a horror. That is unnecessary since we have not suffered any damage or horror. But we do pass. And so we uh, we deal with that easily enough. I am going to take my first action. to play the track shoes. Track shoes gives us more opportunities to fail skill tests. That's uh, that's good. Nice little synergy there with the movement. Uh, let's investigate. Yeah, yeah, I could have failed it and, and not suffered any of the consequences and, and generated a bonus action, but uh, that's only if I if I failed with neither rain nor snow. I uh, did not want to fail that uh, with the track shoes in my hand because otherwise I'd probably lose them and then I would be uh, very sad. Uh, we're going 3v2 on the investigate. Uh, let's go... we're gonna lose a card if we fail this. Yeah, or do we take a resource? Um, no, because if we fail it with look what I found if we fail the test, we can't play Liquid I Found before that forced effect triggers, so it won't matter. All right, 3v2, Chaos Bag gives us a minus 3, so we do fail. So we lose the scrounge for supplies. 
Let's try it again. We get a plus one this time, so we succeed. Yes, uh, Trax Shoes was uh, fantastic, Bernard, if you uh, watch the playthrough of uh, I did of uh, Return to Lost in Time and Space with uh, Ashcan Pete. Hi, Codap Games. Welcome to, the Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. We are playing uh, Stella Clark, the new investigator from the Investigator Starter Decks. So far, she's done all right. We're only a couple turns in, though, so things can turn uh, dramatically. We get our second copy of Peter Sylvester. Uh, they did spoil her signature asset, I can, or signature skill, sorry. Uh, it is neither rain nor snow. Uh, it has three wild icons, and if this skill test fails, you cancel all effects of the failed uh, skill test. They did not spoil her uh, signature weakness, so we're just playing a couple of weaknesses to make up for it. So it's not a perfect, uh, perfect run, but... Uh, It'll give us some idea how we're uh, how we're doing. Hi, Darren. Welcome to the stream. Uh, oh, we're advancing. Well, look at that. We advance to uh, agenda one B. The lead investigator must decide either each investigator discards one card at random from his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes two horror. Um. I'm not overly concerned about my hand, so I lose Peter Sylvester. Rise the rise of the ghouls. So let's do some moving. We wrapped up our Kodab says we wrapped up our Dream Eaters on stream the other night and had a perfect run was ruined by Nyarlathotep. Of course it was. Darren has been playing playing uh, single testing Mandy single player as a rogue through the Forgotten Age. Hi let us folk, welcome to the stream. We are at the bathroom. One shroud location with one clue. After you reveal a special token while investigating, lose all remaining actions and end your turn. I have not played. Uh, I have not played Where the Gods Dwell yet. That is. Uh, that's on my list of things to do here. Uh, I'm trying to avoid it just so I can play it blind on stream. It's one of the problems I find when I'm trying to do blind playthroughs is that I fall behind and then... Uh, oh no, that's fine. Spoilers are fine. The uh, I usually hear about stuff anyway, so it's hard to it's hard to do a true, true, true blind playthrough. So we're going 3v1 at the bathroom. It was all a dream. Of course it was. Uh, 3v1 at the bathroom. We draw an auto fail. Well, look at that. So we lose all remaining actions and end our turn. So unfortunately, we do fail, but we don't, uh, Stella does not get, uh, Stella doesn't get her bonus action out of that since we, uh, we auto failed that. So that's too bad. We draw another copy of Live and Learn. We are on turn five. Encounter card is the ghoul from the depths. The bathroom ghoul has arrived. So he spawns right on top of us. The Bathroom Ghoul has 3 Fight, 4 Health, and 2 Evade. Humanoid Monster Ghoul spawns in the bathroom. He has Retaliate. He's worth a victory point and hits us for a damage and a horror. So, we need to kill this guy. Fortunately, we've got some resources we can spend. 
I could have just evade him, but then we'd end up having to deal with him later anyway once all the ghouls come out, so we might as well get rid of him now. Uh, three fight. We are three fight. But we do have the fire axe. Juicy says, my campaign run with Winnie through TFA had a really rough game in Boundary Beyond. Yeah, this. Uh, yeah, you mentioned this one where you, you got defeated by the Harbinger after failing to evade three times in the row, three times in a row. That is, that's rough. Yeah, with Winnie, you would not expect that sort of, uh, that sort of bad luck. Boundary Beyond is bad. Is is a bad one though. Anyway, so it's hard to. Uh, that one is hard to get through in solo with any sort of good result. Hi, Robert. Welcome to the stream. How's the weather? Hopefully it's good for you today. I'm playing the mail carrier. Uh, so let's try to kill this guy. Let's spend gonna take us a couple actions though which is kind of annoying uh, so we'll spend a resource to go 5v3 chaos bag gives us a minus 3 so we fail and he is going to retaliate against us Uh, so we will put a horror on put the horror on Peter. Let's try this again. Mm. Now we're not going to be able to kill him this turn. We do get the action back though because we failed with uh, Stella. So we have we still have three actions. All right, let's attack again. 5v3, Chaos Bag says minus 2, so we hit him for a damage. We will spend another resource to go 5v2. 5v3, sorry. And we get a minus 1. So we have one more attack. Uh, we're going 3v3, but we get two damage, which is unfortunate because it's not uh, not ideal. We do have a live and learn, though. So 3v3. Uh, we will take a retaliate, which is kind of annoying, but we've got lots of health and sanity. We get a minus two, so we fail. So we'll take a damage and a horror, and then I'm going to play the live and learn. So we'll go 5v3 again. Oh, come on. Minus 3. So we fail, and he attacks us again. And again. Wow. This bathroom ghoul is a tough... Uh, is tough. So we, uh, there's a neither rain nor snow we draw during the upkeep phase. Counter card is an ancient evils. All right, we need to kill the ghoul. We took a, we get to heal one off of uh, Peter though. Spend a resource, 5v3. We get a plus one, so the ghoul is dead. Uh, add him to the victory display. Stella's a Kodab game says, I love the thought of Stella's weakness being you succeed, but get none of the benefits of succeeding. He 
Yeah, her whole thing is uh her whole thing is uh is uh succeeding by failure. So let's try to investigate here 3v1. We get a minus 2, so we succeed. So we've got the three clues we need. We need to be at the Great Hall. So let's move up to the Great Hall. And then we can spend we can spend our clues to advance. Uh, put a play, put into play the set aside hole in the wall. Uh, choose an investigator in the guest hall. The chosen investigator mo immediately moves to the hole in the wall and reveals it. Then he or she must spend f four. Uh, we go four. 4v3 for each point that investigator fails by here she must discard a random card from her hand so yeah that's not uh, we'll probably commit the so we reveal the attic cellar and parlor there is the parlor we will go get ourselves a random attic and cellar there's an attic and there's a cellar. So choose an investigator. The chosen investigator immediately moves, that reveals it, then must pass willpower four. I'm going to commit a rain, neither rain nor snow to that. So we're going to go seven or six v four. And we get a minus two, so we pass. All right. Uh, so we go, we get the 18 Derringer, 18 caliber Derringer level zero version. There is a level two version as well. Uh, so we'll gain our three actions and go to the mythos phase. Turn seven, four of seven doom. We will draw a... There is an acolyte of Umordoth. Three combat, three fight, three health, two evade, Humanoid monster ghoul, prey is the fewest cards in hand, while engaged with an investigator with no cards in his or her hand, Acolyte of Umardoth cannot be evaded. Okay, so we can evade him, but I don't think we want to have him sitting at the... in the hallway. Uh, we can try to kill him. Hi Byzantium, welcome to the stream. Hope everything is going uh, going well in Italy. Uh, do we kill this guy? I think we'd kill him. We need to be. We can go four v three. We can go. We can spend a resource to go 5v3. We get a skull, which is a minus one because he is a ghoul. So he takes two damage. Now we are going 3v3. I'm going to commit the Derringer. Chaos, we're going 4v3. Chaos Bag says 0. So this ghoul is dead. We have one action remaining. Let's go up. 
It is the regular attic. We will take a horror, which uh, Peter will gladly, uh, gladly take for us. Two clues. All right, so now would be, if we can get and look what I found online, that might be helpful, although it's probably better at the cellar. We get a last chance during the upkeep. It's got tons of icons on it at the moment. Five of seven doom. Uh, Peter actually heals that too. I should remember that since he heals at the end of the turn. Yeah, Peter is always looking for dead bodies and stuff like that. He's got a morbid curiosity. I think he probably because he's he's a football player. He pro he's probably the guy who's like there poking them with a stick. We get another ghoul. Man, oh man, the ghouls are just coming out like uh, crazy at the moment. This is the Grave Eater, two fight, two health, two evade, humanoid monster ghoul. After Grave Eater attacks, you discard a card at random from your hand. So we will attack him. We will be going 5v2 with the fire axe. Chaos Bag gives us a minus two, and the Grave Eater is sent back to the grave. Uh, we need to do make a couple of investigation checks here. We can go 3v1. We get a minus one, so we grab a clue. And we will do 3v1 again. We get a skull, that is a zero, so we grab both clues. Yeah, I've played last, I've been playing Last Chance in a lot of decks. Uh, it seems like a lot of the survivor decks I've been playing lately uh, run pretty low on hand size, so Last Chance is, is I mean, when you're getting three if you're getting two three four icons out of it you're you're doing pretty well so we grab both clues at the attic and we get the old key ring okay that might uh, that would definitely come in handy at the cellar so we will Six of seven doom, we're, uh, we're starting to... Oh my god, another Grave Eater. Wow. Okay, well, I think we'll have to kill this guy too, because the there's just going to be too many ghouls otherwise. All right. So we'll go 5v2 again with the fire axe. We're just chopping ghouls down left, right, and center. Chaos Bag gives us an auto fail that time. That is unfortunate. But we do get our ability, Stella's ability triggers so we don't lose, we gain the, we gain the action back. So I think for the next attack, we will have to... It doesn't have retaliate or anything. So for the next attack, we'll commit the last chance to go... Um, we're up three, so 6v2 for two damage. We get a minus one. So that ghoul is dead. Let's move, and then we'll use the track shoes... Uh, we're going, uh, we have a, 
An agility of six. Awesome. So we're going to go 6v3 to try to get a free move out of the deal. We get an Elder Sign. So I can auto-fail to heal a damage and a horror. Do I want to do that? Um, no, I don't think so. I think I will succeed because I want to, I need to move here a little faster than. So the seller is the new seller. Forced after you reveal seller, put the set aside deep below your house location into play. So we are going deep below the house if we want the victory point, of course. Now we are going to advance next turn. Just have to say that track. Robert says, just have to say that track shoes are not proper footwear for a postal worker. And you would uh, you would be the one to know that uh, that Robert you wouldn't you wouldn't like to walk around in cleats for eight hours a day I can imagine that would get exceedingly uncomfortable walking on cleats on uh, on pavement for eight hours would be uh, would be brutal so we have a choice here we can go after the VP or we can I think we're a little behind the the curve here so we may just uh, have to go for the uh, but how are we gonna kill how are we gonna kill the the ghoul uh, we can evade the ghoul the ghoul priest go grab Lita Lita would help us cut him down pretty quickly You do use the cleats in winter. Well, yeah, that would that would make sense. The last thing you'd need to do is slip and fall on the ice. An uncle of mine did that, and he ended up breaking his pelvis or his back in five places. So, yeah, slipping on ice is no joke. So if we grab Lita... We would be hitting the Ghoul Priest for three damage... We'd be four versus four, though. And he's got retaliate. So we'd need some resources. Maybe if we gain... If we can gain a bunch of resources... I think we're going to definitely need some resources before we uh, before we can do this. Let's investigate. We're going three v two. We might as well throw the uh, throw the uh, or commit the liquid I found to this to go five v two. We get a minus two. So we grab the last clue that we need. All right. We draw a lucky. Well, that's uh, that's good. Uh, where are we going next? We need. We are advancing, which is kind of. Not great. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a ghoul enemy dis is discarded to draw that enemy. So all those ghouls we killed go back into the deck. And we are getting a ghoul. There's a rats. There's an Ancient Evils, another Ancient Evils, a Frozen in Fear, another Ancient Evils, 
Okay, well, there are, I don't think there are any more Ancient Evils in the deck, so... Crypt Chill, Dissonant Voices, there is a Grave Eater. All right, so we've got 10 turns. Forced at the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged ghoul enemy moves one towards the parlor. At the end of the round, place one doom on this agenda for each ghoul enemy in the hallway or parlor. So if we can keep the ghouls down, we could gain, maybe take a turn to get a bunch of resources to fuel the fire axe. Go grab Lita. Use Lita and the fire axe to boost us... Uh, to carry the day to kill to kill the ghoul priest. First we've got to kill this chump though. We will spend a resource to go 3v2 or 5v2. We get an elder sign. No, I'm not going to use it. I could heal, but, and gain an extra action out of the deal. So we'll move there, we will gain, uh, that was our first action, second action, gain a resource, third action. That's what this deck needs, is an emergency cash or two. Um, Okay, we draw a trial by fire. That's nice, but it's a very expensive at three. But it does set our ability to five until the end of the turn. The ghoul priest is four. It's probably not enough. If we had Lita, we'd be f uh, six v four. 6v4 for 3 damage. That's pretty good. Um, do I advance? I don't think I'm going to advance this turn. I want to gain a couple more resources, I think, before I do that. All right, Mythos phase, we draw yet another ghoul. How many ghouls do we have to kill? Thank God we've got the fire axe. I can't imagine trying to kill all these ghouls with just the uh, the 18 caliber Derringer. Hmm. So we can go three, four, five versus three. We get a minus one for one damage. We'll go five versus three again. Plus one, so the ghoul is dead. Man, I just can't get I can't get enough uh, momentum here. I need a resource. And that will be the turn. We get Grimm's fairy tales. That is not going to be all that helpful at the moment. 2 of 10 doom. Counter deck gives us, okay, that's what we needed. We needed the dissonant voices now. You cannot play assets or events. That's fine, because I just want to take three resources. This turn, and then we will be set up to kill the ghoul priest, I think. So when does everything happen here? So when the round ends, we can advance... At the end of the round, place one doom on this agenda for each ghoul enemy. So we're going to get the... So we're going to advance. We're going to add an additional doom. We'll 
we get scrounge for supplies. Choose a level zero card in the discard pile. What do we have in our discard pile? We've got a last chance in there. That's pretty nice. But that's going to take an action. We also need to... I think we need to parlay if we want Lita too, don't we? Uh, maybe we just wail away at the... We just evade. We've got six evade. Maybe we just evade six agility. Maybe we just evade the, the ghoul priest and then hammer away at him. So we'll spend our three three clues. This goes away, the uh, dissonant voices. We will flip. So the barrier blockading the parlor has vanished. We reveal the parlor. Parlor has a two shroud location resigned. This is too much for me. Uh, while Lita Chandler is not controlled by a player, she gains parlay test for, uh, uh, for intellect. If you succeed, take control of her. That might actually be a bit too tough for us. I don't think we've got the, the stuff to do that. Uh, we set her, we put her in the parlor. And then we spawn the set aside ghoul priest in the hallway. At the end of the round, we add a doom. And we're good to go. Four of ten doom. Encounter card is a rotting remains. Uh, we can commit the Grimm's fairy tales to that to go 4v3. Chaos Bag gives us a skull. That's a minus one due to the Ghoul Priest. So we pass. All right, we've got three actions. can we do? We could play Trial by Fire. That would set our fight to th our combat to five. Five V four plus we would have could go yeah let's do that trial by fire we set our combat to five for the turn so we're going 5v4 then we can spend a resource to go 6v4 Yeah, it would have been it would have been good to I was kind of hoping I would fail by a little bit. But uh yeah, the extra action would have come in handy here. But who knows, maybe we get attacked. So we're going uh 5 6 7 v4 with the fire axe. We get a minus one, so he takes a damage. Um, I can't kill him this turn, can I? 
I don't have the damage to kill him in one turn. Unless I go one big test. I can do four to him this turn safely. Spend another resource to go uh, five, six, seven, V4. Elder Sign, again, no, I still, I don't want to automatically fail this, because then I just get attacked. Hi, Heroic Logic. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Uh, so he will take another damage, and then I think I'm just going to evade him. We will go 6v4 on the evade. And we get another elder sign. Wow. This is uh, Stella Clark, Heroic Logic. Uh, she is going to be released in the Investigator Starter Decks. She is the new Survivor Investigator. She is a 0505. Five, uh, five. She's a total survivor. Uh, can only use survivor cards. We know what her signature um, skill is. Neither rain nor snow, which has three wild icons on it. And uh, a little bit of game text that uh, may or may not be come into play if you fail. Uh, we don't know what her weakness is, so we are just playing with a couple of extra weaknesses uh, to make up for it. So the ghoul priest is evaded. No point in failing that. Um, we draw a last chance. That's awfully nice to see. Uh, it's not super awesome since I can't get rid of the scrounging easily. Uh, so we add a doom at the end of the round. Our encounter card is another ghoul. He shows up in the bedroom, though. Yeah, she has three. Three copies of Neither Rain Nor Snow are in her deck. Let's evade the ghoul priest again. 6v4. We get a minus 1, so he is evaded. Now we can just whack away at him with impunity. So we will go uh, 7v... Uh, sorry, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3... Four, five, six, seven, V four. There is an auto fail, but we get that action back, so we still have two attacks. Uh, let's attack with the last chance. Five V four. That's a minus one. Uh, yep, so he takes another two damage. Yeah, I should have saved a resource for Lucky. That would have been helpful. Because now I have to go 3v4. I don't have anything I can commit to it. Uh, but he is evaded, so uh, let's take a resource now. We'll just uh, we'll wait a turn. 
So at the end of the enemy phase, uh, each unengaged ghoul moves one towards the parlor. So the ghoul priest moves to the parlor. Well, that's annoying as hell. Since he is unengaged. Uh, and then we are going to add a doom at the end of the turn. We get a resourceful. Uh, we add a doom. We have to add one more doom. Ooh, getting close. Getting very close. So we've got to kill him this turn. Uh, our encounter card is going to be a rat's. That's fine. I will take the damage from the rats. I will chase the ghoul priest to the parlor. Taking a damage from the rats. I will attack the ghoul priest. Yeah, I think uh, I think they do move. I don't think exhausting them. There's another card. It's the no. It's not a card. It's the uh, there's a token in a secret name. The uh, elder thing that forces hunters to move. If you draw it, if you fail and you draw the elder thing, uh, hunters move. And I've always played it that even if they're exhausted, they move. But maybe I'm wrong about that. It just says unengaged enemies move. Uh, the text on their getting out just says at the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged ghoul enemy moves. And he is technically unengaged, although he is exhausted. So I have two shots to take this guy down. Uh, we will go three, four, five. We will commit a resourceful to go six. Six v four, and we've got a lucky if we need it. Chaos bag says auto fail, of course. <laughs> of course it says auto fail. Uh, so he retaliates. I'm going to take two damage and uh, horror. Wow. That sucks. I get the action back, but... Uh, Yeah, that auto fail really uh, hurt us there, because now we're sort of in a in a bad position. I can spend a resource to trigger the fire axe, which would put us at five v four. But if he, but then I can't play the lucky. I seem to be getting a lot of bad luck with the auto fail lately. So when I was playing the secret name last night, the game was nine turns and I drew four auto fails. And they always seem to happen on these key tests where I just need pretty much every, any other number is good, but I draw an auto fail and then it's just like, well, I'm, I'm kind of stuck now. Um, yeah.
Yeah, it is a lot of tentacles, heroic logic. Four tentacles in a nine-turn game is is excessive. And I drew four in that game. I also drew four elder things, which are minus threes, which is which is crazy too. So. Kenyon says, maybe your custom investigator should get some bonus for auto-fail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was thinking maybe uh, the, the I had uh, Brian from uh, Right of Seeking. He, he did some work on a Man from Ling Investigator card for me. And uh, we've got an idea for the card. Uh, probably will tinker with it a little bit, but the signature, uh, his signature weakness was the high priest not to be described. Uh, so maybe he can have some sort of, uh, some sort of relationship with the auto fail token. Like maybe he seal, maybe the, the, uh, he seals, uh, one of the good tokens or something like that, increasing the chance of auto failure. Because, yeah, my luck seems to be awful when it comes to the auto-fail. But I did draw... How many Elder Things or uh, Elder Signs did I draw? Three in this game? So that's that's a little off, too. I'm just trying to decide, do I spend the resource here or don't I? Because if I don't, I'm going five... I'm going three v four. Or I'm going five v four. Because I lose the game if I'm going to lose the game next turn. Or I could just resign. That's the other option. Hmm. 5v4 or 3v4 with a lucky. All right, 5v4 it is. Chaos Bag says, Skull, that's a minus one. We win. So he takes another two damage. And we kill him. That was lucky. All right, so Stella defeats the ghoul priest on the last possible turn. On the final turn of the game. Glad we didn't go deep below the house or we would never have made it. Although we did stall for a few, a turn or two at the hallway trying to get some resources to deal with the ghoul priest. But uh, we did manage to... Uh, We did manage to defeat the ghoul priest. We got two... Is he worth two VPs or one VP? He's worth two. So we got two, three... Uh, four... We got four, is that all? Four? Four VPs? Uh, wrong window. We end up with four VPs. I think if we burn the house down, we get another for five. Oh, I'm probably paying with the wrong chaos bag distribution now that I think about it, but that's fine. It's all the same. It's all bad. Uh, let's see. So if we burn the house... Uh, lead investigator decides burn the house down or no way we're burning the house down.
So R1, we'd get and we'd get to keep Lita. I would assume so, Pizda, that the uh, that it would have a, a 2 XP version. Uh, we'd suffer a mental trauma, and we get two bonus experience points. So we'd gain two, three, four, five, six VP. All right, we burn it down. So we end up with 6 VP and Lita and a Mental Trauma. All right. Uh, let's see if we can't, just going to switch back to a different window here while I, while I tinker with the deck a little bit. All right, so we need, Stella. So what do we add to the deck with 6 VP? That is the question. Get Lita for one. Let's throw her in the deck. Um, I don't think we need to go to Peter too. Uh, we could go Derringer too. Yeah, I was thinking about upgrade. Usually Peter is my first upgrade, but he gives willpower and yeah, that's the thing. He gives willpower and agility. That'd be 4 of 6. Yeah, he'd be four of six, so. We'll add two of him. Leaves us with two VP, two XP. Um, we could upgrade a Lucky. What else is there in the... Uh... Let's take a quick look here at the card list and see if there's anything that's worth 2 VP, 2 XP that, that uh, appeals to me. See, we've got the Derringer, Chance Encounter, no. Close call, cornered, uh, cornered.
Yeah, I think we add a copy of cornered. That's a pretty, pretty straightforward, a pretty straightforward addition. Uh, we have to remove something. Hi Ben, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Let's take out one of those rabbit's foot. You played Dexter Drake. Uh, ben played Dexter Drake for the first time today and absolutely loves him. Yeah, I've only played him once. Uh, I only played him once in the preview, and that wasn't a, an entirely correct build, so I have yet to play him again. So let's reset. We'll play Midnight Masks as well, since we've got some time here. Give Stella a good test. Today we are playing Stella Clark, the uh, the survivor investigator who will be released in the uh, who will be released in uh, the investigator starter decks come uh, August or so. Okay, so those are our dudes. Uh, we need to, so our house isn't uh, coming into play. Switch back to octagon here. Uh, so all the others we will need to, uh, and the ghoul priest is dead. So we shall shuffle these up. North side downtown Lucky's 2 Lucky is a 2 uh, 2 cost upgrade So I'd only be able to get one of them so I feel like the cornered will do more work overall. I don't know, it's going to be hard. I think this one's going to be tough to... The return to version of this is... Uh, Northside, downtown, east town, Miskatonic, River, Sa River Town, Graveyard, St. Mary's, south side. I think we're good. Uh, we just, hi Cryo Shark, we just played Return to the Gathering and uh, we beat the Ghoul Priest on the final turn of the game. Earned 6 VP, so we have uh, upgraded Peter Sylvester and we have purchased a copy of Cornered. And that is about all. Yeah, she's... Uh, She's done pretty well. We've uh, the only thing that we've run into a couple times is we've drawn elder signs and uh, haven't I haven't triggered her elder sign ability yet because each time I've drawn an elder sign, it's been way more auto failing. A test is not uh, not has not been in our best interests. Uh, so this is the new river town abandoned warehouse four shroud location with a clue Action discard a card with X willpower skill icons remove X doom from a cultist enemy in play group limit once per game Now I think we have We need to shuffle these up So we so we don't know which uh, Oh, 
yeah, that would be a uh, piece that would be a good one for the uh, custom investigator. He suggests uh, adding a second tentacle to the bag while it's in play for the rest of the scenario if you want to be extra evil. Well, maybe while the uh, the uh, it's going to be the high uh, high priest not to be described. So he would be yeah he'd be an enemy. So I'd have to take out an enemy who would add an, a second uh, tentacle to the bag. That would be a good idea. I like that. That definitely would be thematic, given the number of tentacles that I draw. I think we're set here. So let's draw our opening hand. Oh, I need my weaknesses. That's the other thing. Uh, I had the tower and through the gates, neither of which came into play last game. Uh, her weakness is, no, we haven't seen her weakness yet. Uh, we have seen her signature skill, uh, neither rain no, nor snow. She gets three of them in her deck, but we don't know what her, uh, what her weakness does yet. Unfortunately. FFG has, uh, decided not to spoil that one. All right, here we go. We get a copy of Through the Gates. We get Lita in our opening hand. I think, oh, she's free too. That's pretty sweet. Uh, let's pitch all of this stuff. We'll keep Lita. Last chance, live and learn, lucky, and trial by fire. So not, not a great hand, unfortunately. Lead is awfully nice. Being free and all. And plus one combat and, uh, and, uh, extra damage. So we'll add three, get our actions. First action, we'll play Lita. Uh, second action. I feel like we go to the graveyard. Get it, if we can get the graveyard clue out of the way. Or two clues, sorry. Uh, no, the, the name of her weakness is called by the mists, or called by the mist, because she has some sort of, there's some sort of voices in her head that, uh, bitten by a dog would be, maybe that'll come out in Barkham Horror, a new week, a, a new dog related weakness for all, all, uh, all, for each investigator. So after we enter the graveyard, we test three willpower. If you fail, you either take two horror or move to river town. Uh, we're going three versus three, and we get a zero. So no problem there. And we will investigate three versus one, and there is an auto fail. We get our Uh, we get an action back though, so we get to do it again, and we get another zero, so we grab a clue. Four action turn there for Stella. We draw a look what I found, and we go to the mythos phase. Shouldn't it be scratched by cat instead? Yeah, they could. Well, they could have cat-related weaknesses for all, for all. But that'd probably be just they'd they'd all have to be like distractions. Cats are distractions because they all spend too much time watching cats do silly things. Uh, right. 
one of six doom and we are drawing our first encounter card which is a false lead if you have no clues false lead gain surge if you have one or more clues test for intellect if we fail we lose our clue but we'll gain an action all right well we'll just take it three v four we get a zero, we fail, but that's fine because we get an extra action this turn. So we drop our clue back. So first action, investigate uh, 3v1. We get a zero. Second action, 3v1. Or, yeah, second action of four. We get a tablet. That is a minus three, and if you fail, place one of your clues on your location. Uh, so... I believe I can do this because the tablet, if you fail, we fail the skill test, so we place a clue on our location. Then we can play the look what I found to grab two clues because we failed the skill test by two or less. So we'll discover the two clues. So that worked out, I guess, okay. Uh, let's move to Rivertown. How many clues do we need? Two clues to get our first. Actually, before I move, I'm going to, uh, before I do that, let's spend our two clues to get our first, uh, our first dude. It is Peter Warren. So he is at the Miskatonic University. Spend two clues parlay to add him to the victory display. Or we can just kill him. Then we will use our action to move to Rivertown. We don't have anything we... Uh, well, he's not a monster. We're 4v2. So we could kill him with the help of uh, Alita. All right, let's see if we draw a weapon. Uh, there is level two Peter. Turn three, our encounter card is an On Wings of Darkness. Test four, if we fail, we take a damage and a horror and stay where we are and get an extra action. So that's not terrible. And we get a plus one. Look at that. So we actually succeed on On Wings of Darkness. I wouldn't have minded failing that one. Um... We could go south side St. Mary's, come up and get Peter that way. Uh, we don't have a lot of stuff to help us gather clues, but sort of wait and see if we get a weapon here. South side, two shroud location with one clue. Search your deck for an ally asset and add it to your hand. Well, we're not going to be doing that. So we'll go 3v2. We get a zero, so we grab the clue. We'll move to St. Mary's. It is also a two shroud location with one clue, and we can heal three damage there. 
we get a resourceful. Um, yeah. Mythos phase we draw. A disciple of the devourer, farthest empty location. Okay. Um, two, three, four, two, three, four, probably East Town. So he will go on East Town and then. After you spawn him, you must either place a doom on it or place one of your clues on its location. Um, hmm. We add a doom. We wouldn't have that many turns to get to him and kill him. But I don't feel like losing a clue either, so. Alright. Uh, let's go three versus two to grab a clue at St. Mary's. Elder sign. We can auto fail that to heal, but that's not going to matter. Um, we can go one, two, move back to River Town, and then we'll kill, we'll try to kill this guy next turn before the doom gets us. There's the tower. So we cannot commit cards to skill tests while the tower is in our hand. Hmm. We've got the resources to pay for it. So that's okay. I guess we can pay for resources to bring the tower out and then uh, go kill that guy. Although we don't have many cards to commit to it, uh, most of our cards are good if we f like we've got a live and learn and a lucky. Uh, so we are at five of six doom. Encounter card. Oh, another one of these guys. Shoot. Uh, farthest empty. Um, So we are going to advance now, regardless of whether we want to or not. Um, I guess it's downtown for you. Downtown or St. Mary's. Maybe I put him at St. Mary's. That way he would be... F I wouldn't have to deal with him. Since now I'm going to advance regardless. Well, I guess I could drop a clue on him. But there's no point, because I'm, I'm advancing regardless, so I'm not going to give up my clue for him. I really need a weapon. Or some way... I guess I can evade. Uh, let's bring out... Okay, first off, I'm going to get rid of the tower out of my hand. Second, I'm going to bring out another cultist. Uh, it is her. Shoot. Uh, well, I've got a good chance of evading her. 
The cultist is Ruth Turner, the mortician, and after she is evaded, I can add her to the victory display. So I can actually probably evade her. Um, do we want to go see Warren? Not really. Um, hmm. I guess we'll go this way. We'll set up to deal with Ruth, and then we'll try to deal with Peter. We are going to advance. Oh, we get through the gates. Through the gate. Both weaknesses hit this game. Draw a top card of your deck. If it's not a weakness, remove it from the game. Through the gates hits the 18 Derringer. So we lose both our Derringers. So we only have one weapon left in the deck, which is the Fire Axe. That sucks. Where is the other Derringer? There it is. It was at the bottom of the deck anyway. All right, so we we get tagged by Through the Gates. We lose both of our 18 caliber Derringers. Um, yeah, that hurts. Uh, so we are advancing. So these guys lose their doom. Uh, this flips. Who is it? It is the Masked Hunter. Fortunately, he is very easy to evade. Masked Hunter, four, f four fight, four health, two evade. Humanoid cultist enemy engaged with prey. Most clues, Hunter, he gets plus two health per investigator. And we can't discover or spend clues while he is engaged with us. So he is going to engage us. And I don't think we're going to be able to kill him. At least not easily. He is, is he a monster? No, he's not a monster. We don't get the plus one damage. So we'd be going 4-4, four, four, but we'd need to hit him like six times. That's not happening. Uh, we do have to draw an encounter card, though, which is going to be Hunting Shadow Peril. You must either choose to spend a clue or take two damage. That's pretty easy. We will just throw it on Lita for now. And we keep on trucking. It's turn six. Investigation phase of turn six. We've got the masked hunter engaged with us. We've got a couple enemies sitting at uh, St. Mary's Hospital, Ruth Turner and the uh, the Disciple of the Devourer. We can probably deal with the Disciple and we can probably evade Ruth. So let's evade the masked hunter. We're going 4v2. Chaos Bag says Cultist. That is a minus two and place one Doom on the nearest Cultist enemy. Well, it's going to be this guy. That's just going to shorten the game on us. But he is exhausted. Two actions remaining. We will move in to St. Mary's and engage Ruth Turner and the Disciple of the Devourer. Let us attempt to evade Ruth. We are 4v5. Um, we could set our... No, we don't, want, we don't want to use Trial by Fire right now. We've got a Lucky and a Live and Learn. Let's commit... We'll commit a resourceful. We'll go 5v5. 
We've got a live and learn and a lucky, so minus four. Oh, geez. Um, that's a huge failure. So the resourceful goes away. We can play the live and learn, though. She doesn't have alert or retaliate or anything, so we can attempt the test again. Uh, and we get an action out of it. Wow, live and learn is awesome with her. Uh, so we're back up to two actions. Uh, sorry, we have one action remaining because we evaded, moved, evaded, so we have one action remaining. Now we are going five, uh, six v five. Six v five. Chaos bag says elder sign. We can auto fail that to heal, but we are not going to. Ruth is added to the victory display. We have one action remaining. Uh, we are 4v3 to take out this uh, Disciple of the Devourer. Mm, I don't care much about this guy. 4v3, Chaos Bag says Cultist. That's a minus two and place a doom on the nearest cultist enemy. So he would get a doom, but we can play our lucky to kill him. So he dies. The uh, Disciple of the Devourer dies as well. So that actually turned out pretty well. Uh, yeah, Live and Learn and Stella Clark is an awesome combination because she gets the extra action and uh, and then you get to try the test again. Very nice there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, Stella. So we've got the the masked hunter is now on our tr on our tail. Oh, we drew the fire axe. Oh, so nice. So, so nice. Now we can we might actually kill that guy. We might actually kill the masked hunter. Uh, Peter. We could also try to kill him. So we've got a few options. We could get to uh, three cultists. At least uh, one of eight or uh, two of eight doom. Sorry, and our encounter card is going to be a locked door. The locked door will go on the river town. The abandoned warehouses are locked. They are locked up tight. We will have to break down the door if we want them. Um. First action, Stella will play the Fire Axe. Second action, Stella will move into Peter Warren. At Miskatonic University, it's a four shroud location with two clues. It's the old Miskatonic University. We can search the top six cards of our deck for a Tomer spell and add it to our hand. Um, oh, he can get to us right from here. Damn it. Um, hmm. I think what I do, I'm going to move. I'm going to drag Peter with me. I'll take the attack of opportunity because I don't want to take too damage. Uh, I would take even more damage from the hunter from the Masked Hunter. So I'll take a damage and then uh, I will take another damage during the enemy phase. And the Masked Hunter will move to the Miskatonic University. And we need to reveal Northside. Uh, 
uh, we can spend five resources to gain two clues from the pool. Uh, so if we did that, Northside lets us spend five resources to gain two clues. So if we did that and then parlayed with Peter, we could deal with him. Uh, that's the enemy phase. We draw a scrounge for supplies. Scrounging for a live and learn would be pretty awesome. Mythos phase three of eight. We draw the mask of a Mordoth attached to the farthest cultist enemy and place one doom on that enemy. If there are no cultist enemies in play, search the encounter deck discard pile for a cultist. Attached enemy gets plus two health. If attached enemy is not unique, it gains aloof. Otherwise it gains retaliate. Ouch. Ouch. So the masked hunter now has two doom on him and he is he gains retaliate and um he has eight health. Ouch. That's a problem. Hmm. That is a big problem. I mean, I could try to take him out, but man, oh man. Um, well, let's kill. Peter. We are three, four V two. Four V two chaos bag gives us an elder sign. I'm not going to auto fail that. So he takes a damage. Oh. Um you're right. Pizda. The other cultist is further away. I forgot about that guy. There is a guy up here and he's further. Okay, so you go. So we go up here. You're right. So this guy is uh this guy has a doom on him. Attached to farthest cultist enemy, place a doom on him. Attached enemy gets plus two health, and if he's not unique, he gains aloof. Okay, so the masked hunter is no longer the menace that I thought he was. Uh, we still have too much doom on the table, but uh, at least the masked hunter is killable now. Um... So we hit Peter once. Let's try again. 4v2. We get a 0. And we will try one more time. 4v2. We get a minus 1. So Peter is dead. Uh, we add him to the victory display. During the enemy phase, the masked hunter attacks us. He hunts us and we do two damage and a horror. So yeah, I think we can kill him with trial by fire.
five, six. Yeah, I think we can do it with trial by fire. Uh, we get Grimm's Fairy Tales. Uh, that is not going to help us. Not overly impressed with Grimm's Fairy Tales at the moment. It's nice, I think, if you can get it down on the table. I'm not really failing that many skill tests, though. Like, I'm either failing them big time or I'm not failing them at all. So, not, not wild about that card right now. We go to the Mythos phase. There is uh, five of eight Doom. Our encounter card is going to be a Night Gaunt. That is really annoying. However, let's try to kill the uh, kill our friend, the Masked Hunter. He has six health and four fight. We will play trial by fire to set our to set our combat to five, and we get six with Lita. Six v four. We will go 8v4 with one resource for the Fire Axe. We get a 0, so he takes a damage. Oh, I needed to spend two resources. I need to hit him three times with the Fire Axe. So I have to spend two resources to hit him with the Fire Axe for two damage for the first one. We do it again, so now we're going uh, 5, 6, V4. Chaos Bag says minus 1, so we hit him again for 2 damage. And then I think I commit the last chance for 2 icons to go 3, 4... Or sorry, five, six, seven, eight v four. Cultist is a minus two, and we place a doom on this guy, and then he dies. So the masked hunter is dead. All right, we've got three cultists. We've killed three cultists, and the trial by fire has been awesome. Trial by fire and live and learn have been stars so far. Unfortunately, we take attack. We take a damage and a horror from the. We take a damage and a horror from the Night Gaunt. Not much we can do about that. We get a neither rain nor snow in the upkeep. We've got five of eight doom. Uh, five of eight doom. Trying to drink out of the place with the... Five of eight doom. Our encounter card is going to be the corpse taker. Oi, 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 oi. I think the game just ended right then and there. Spawn farthest empty location. One... Two, one, two, three. Uh, corpse Taker spawns at the graveyard. That's fitting. 
at the end of the mythos phase, place a doom on the corpse taker. At the end of the enemy phase, corpse taker moves to river town or main path. If he is already there, move all doom from him to the agenda. Okay. Four, five, six. So we've got two turns. I don't think we get another cultist. The only way we could get another cultist would be if we somehow got these two clues, but we need to spend five resources. If we got these two clues and then somehow managed to Killing the Night Gaunt doesn't really help us. So I think we evade the Night Gaunt first off. I don't believe Ancient Evils is in this encounter set, so we don't have to worry about... We're going to go 5, 6, 7 out of 8. So we have to resign next turn. Unless we kill this guy the disciple of the devourer at east at uh, east town but we can't do that this turn so really we're just buying ourselves time at this point we're not really making progress we're just sort of spinning our wheels let's try to evade the night gaunt we're going 4v1 but he doubles his uh we get a minus two, so that's a minus four. So we fail, but we get the action back thanks to Stella's ability. Um, let's try again. That's a minus six, that's even worse. Uh, let's try again. Skull, that's a minus two cultist enemy there's one there one there so that's a minus two so we do pass so we evade the hunting night gaunt and then we can move once let's move to downtown downtown is a victory location Four Shroud, two Clues, and we can heal three Horror once per game. But I think the game is pretty much over at this point. Uh, we get... he doesn't move yet. End of the enemy phase, he moves towards River Town. Corpse Taker moves there. Okay... Uh, we get an old key ring. Yeah, that's... we're stuck. So five, six, seven doom in play. We get an obscuring fog. That locks us out of that location. Uh, obscuring fog on the downtown makes it a six round location. So we're stuck. So we end up resigning. Yeah, we only got three. We got three of the cultists, but uh, yeah, right at the the corpse taker. Uh, the corpse taker had an extra doom on him at the end of the mythos phase. So we were going to advance. The game was over this round, regardless. So uh, we resign. And yeah, I thought maybe. Uh, if we were lucky, we could uh, maybe get the get the clues here, but that would take me three actions, and I wouldn't be able to do it. So Stella, Stella ends up getting three out of uh, 
three cultists in uh, Midnight Masks, which I guess is okay in Solo. So overall, uh, yeah, I like her. She's. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what her signature weakness does, but uh, based on on playing this deck now a couple times, I really like the uh, that extra her extra action that she gets when she fails a, a check is really nice. Um, that's really really good. Uh, her elder sign ability I have yet to trigger it uh, because auto failing has not been in my best interest so uh, I guess the jury's out on that one I think because uh, Stella's I mean Stella has 8 health and 8 sanity which is huge I think that must be it's got to be the highest in the game so she can soak a ton of damage and horror before you before you actually need to start triggering her elder sign ability to heal Plus, you throw in some allies in that, and yeah, you're just not going to need it. So, um, I guess I could have gone the other way. If I'd moved here, yeah, I went the wrong way. That was dumb of me. I should have gone here and tried to kill the corpse taker. If I'd gone here, then I'd gone, I would have had two actions to take him out. I would have bought myself an extra turn, but I still don't think, I still don't think I get. No, Ben, I think uh, I've been streaming for two hours now, so I think I'm going to, I will uh, save, I will save, uh, the devour below for maybe the next stream and we can play that then uh, I'll have to figure out what how we did in VPs here quickly uh, yeah if I had gone to Miskatonic University instead of downtown that would have gotten the that would have gotten the shroud so I would not have been able to clear that location I could have gone in and killed the corpse taker possibly but then Rivertown was behind a locked door so I really was just buying myself time I wasn't making any progress and I don't think uh, even if I then went and killed the disciple I'm still not making yeah I'm not getting additional cultists so I think in the end three is the best I could have done so yeah, speaking of getting back to Stella here, um, I do like her. Her Elder Sign ability has not come into play largely because she has a huge amount of health and sanity between her and her allies, so healing is not really necessary. So uh, I haven't triggered that. Uh, cards that are awesome with her. Trial by Fire for sure is awesome, but that's going to be awesome in a lot of... Uh, a lot of survivors, so that's not uh, just uh, her. Uh, her signature, her signature skill, neither rain nor snow, gives her three, three wild icons. So you're basically playing with three copies of, three better copies of unexpected courage in your deck, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, Juicy. She, uh, Stella is, uh, she's fun. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, she's, uh, I can't wait to get, I want to see what else is in her deck. I want to see what it, what's in all of their decks, especially Winifred, having played her, uh, quite a bit. I want to see what, uh, like, what her, uh, what, uh, Lonnie Rittner does, her ally, to see whether she, uh, improves that deck. I'd also like to see whether there's an ally in, uh, maybe Granny Orn. I, Granny Orn, they showed the level 2 version or level 3 version, but maybe there is a uh, level 0 version of Granny Orn in Stella's deck. Uh, so her signature skill is really good. Uh, we never played Grit Your Teeth. Um, which is okay. It's not. I think Live and Learn is amazing in Stella. 
because you get the uh, not only do you get the uh, you fail the skill test so you get an extra action out of it and then you get plus two skill value and attempt the test again so you get a free action and the plus two on a retest so live and learn is amazing in Stella grit your teeth is kind of like live and learn but not quite as good since you don't get the retest and you only get plus one but still it's a it's a nice so live and learn and grit your teeth I think uh, together help her out quite a bit uh, obviously take heart is gonna be awesome in her uh, we didn't see it in this game in either game but uh, she's gonna fail skill tests so gaining uh, cards and resources is amazing I think I would have I didn't have emergency cash in this deck I kind of wish I did especially in the last game when I was starved for resources at the end uh, they are not being released in June Pista they uh, uh, FFG has pushed their shipping back to August uh, June we'll see the North American release of the blood of Belshandor with uh, Dexter Drake as well as the final mythos pack Weaver of the Cosmos in the uh, Dream Eater cycle uh, August has the Forgotten a Return to the Forgotten Age and the Investigator starter decks uh, July, I think, is the blob that ate everything, and somewhere in those months, uh, we will also see uh, Barkham Horror released. So I don't expect the next deluxe expansion, Innsmouth Conspiracy, to come out until at least September, but uh, we will be. Uh, they are. That announcement is scheduled for next week, so uh, I will definitely be back. Uh, next Friday with more on uh, on that uh, that product looking forward to seeing seeing who the investigators are in that uh, in that particular uh, I think Trish Scarborough will be the rogue since uh, I believe in her backstory she's investigating the Innsmouth conspiracy so I think she's probably a lock for the rogue slot um, we've seen Kate Winthrop uh, appear on a few cards so I wouldn't be surprised if she was the seeker uh, guardian I have uh, I have no idea who the guardian might be maybe the doctor um, I can't remember his name offhand but maybe the doctor because we did receive uh, if he's anything like Carolyn Fern uh, we've seen a few cards that would work well with him uh, Survivor is obviously Silas. Um, maybe they'll have two Siluses uh, or two Survivors in the pack like they did with Circle Undone with two Mystics. So Silas and, and another Survivor or just Silas by himself. And that leaves the Mystic who would be... Hmm. I don't know who the Mystic would be. I'm pretty sure Trish is the rogue, Silas is the survivor, and Kate will be the seeker, but everything else is uh, up in the air. So yeah, lo really looking forward to the Investigator starter deck products. The uh, the two Investigators that I have played so far, Winifred and uh, and Stella, have both been really, uh, really interesting. Stella has some cool stuff, cool synergies with cards that already exist, and we haven't even seen half the cards in her pack yet. Which will be, uh, which will contain uh, probably even more synergy to uh, to play around with. So, uh, looking forward to that. Uh, I will be back next week with uh, my reviews of the uh, of the uh, player cards in the A Thousand Shapes of Horror. We'll be making our through through all of the packs uh, that have been released in the next uh, weeks and months. So I'll be back with those reviews probably on Monday. I will be posting them. I will also be uh, streaming. We've got one more game with Stella, I think, if we want to do the Devourer Below. And then we uh, want to kick off our campaign with um, Mandy and uh, Tommy through the Circle Undone. So that will be uh, next up. So uh, lots of stuff to... Uh, to uh, look forward to here in the uh, the weeks to come. 
Thanks everyone for coming out for the stream today. It is always fantastic to uh, to have you uh, around. Uh, thanks again to the patrons of the channel uh, who uh, support uh, my work here. Uh, just want to let everyone know, Vincent Lee, that's his name, right? Uh, just want to remind everyone that some of my Patre uh, Patreon supporters, uh, particularly uh, Tim Fiscus and Juicy, are... Uh, content creators in their own right, so I would uh, highly recommend that you go check out their stuff as well if you get the chance. And uh, I will be back uh, next week with reviews and uh, more streams, so uh, I hope that you will tune in then. Have a, uh, uh, I hope that you all have a uh, fantastic weekend and stay safe out there. That's going to do it for this stream. If you enjoyed this content, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I could be reached at manfromleng at gmail.com. I am also on Twitter at manfromleng. If you'd like to become a patron of the channel, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.